Dubbed America's Stonehenge, the Georgia Guidestones formed a mysterious landmark in Alberton, Georgia. Made of four massive slabs of granite, the Guidestones contain ten commandments for a new age of reason. Made of pyramid blue granite, the Georgia Guidestones are meant to withstand the test of time and to communicate knowledge on several levels, philosophically, politically, astronomically, etc. It consists of four major stone blocks, which contain ten guides for living, in eight languages, English, Spanish, Swahili, Hindi, Hebrew, Arabic, Chinese, and Russian. A shorter message is inscribed at the top of the structure in four ancient languages scripts, Babylonian, Classical Greek, Sanskrit, and Egyptian hieroglyphs. It is important to note that those last four ancient languages are of great importance in the teachings of the cult mystery schools. The four major stones are arranged in a giant paddlewheel configuration, which is oriented to the limits of the migration of the sun during the course of the year, and also shows the extreme positions of the rising and setting of the sun in its 18.6-year cycle. The center stone has two special features. First, the north star is always visible through a special hole drilled from the south to the north side of the center stone. Second, another slot aligns with the positions of the rising sun at the time of the summer and winter solstices, and at the equinox. At the base of the guidestones lies an explanatory tablet listing some of the details of the structure. It also mentions a time capsule buried underneath it. The contents of this time capsule, if it exists, are a total mystery. The explanatory tablet explains some of the features of the monuments and its authors, more on them later. The opening date of the time capsule has been left blank. Astronomical features are of great importance in the design of the guidestones. In a relatively new nation such as the United States, monuments that are aligned with celestial bodies are often the work of secret societies, such as the Fransons. Drawing their teachings from the mystery schools of ancient Egypt, Greece or the Druidic Celts, they are known for embedding into monuments some of their sacred knowledge. The ten guides were alluded to several topics dear to the world elite, such as a world court, a world language, and the guiding of human reproduction. However, it was the very first guide that made the guidestone so controversial. Maintain humanity under 500 million in perpetual balance with nature. In order to obtain a population of less than 500 million, humanity needs to be reduced by about 93%. For this reason, the guidestones were believed to be concrete proof of the elite's fixation with massive depopulation. Before I continue the video, please give a like if you'd learned something. And, don't forget to subscribe, and also, click the notification bell too, so you won't miss any update and watch to the end to avoid misunderstanding. Thank you. Throughout the years, the landmark attracted lots of attention from those who revered it and those who hated it alike. Indeed, the monument was the site of strange rituals and gatherings of pagan and occult groups, often on dates with astronomical significance. It was also the target of acts of vandalism, as satanic symbols and messages against the NWO were spray-painted on the structure on numerous occasions. The Georgia Guidestones are a modern-day Rosicrucian manifesto, calling for, or announcing, a drastic change in the way the world is managed. The monument is of great importance in the understanding of the forces covertly shaping today and tomorrow's world. It materializes into stone the crucial link between secret societies, the world elite and the agenda for NWO. The push for a world government, population control, and environmentalism are issues that are today discussed on a daily basis in current events. They were not in 1981 when the guidestones were erected. Can we say that great progress was made? Many of the rules of the guidestones do make sense for the preserving of Earth on a long-term basis. But between the idealistic words of the Guidestones authors and the actual way these policies would be applied on the masses by power-hungry and greedy politicians, there is a world of difference. 
reading between the lines, the Guidestones require from the masses the loss of many personal liberties, and to submit to heightened governmental control on many social issues. Not to mention the death of 92.5% of the population, and probably not those of the elite. Is the concept of a democracy by and for the people, as idealized by the Founding Fathers a mere illusion, a temporary solution until the introduction of a totalitarian world government? Why are the world's citizens not being consulted in a democratic matter? I guess it is easier for the elites to manufacture consent through mass media. But maybe it won't work on everybody. But that being said, the Guidestones are now history. On July 6, at around 4 a.m., an explosive device was detonated by unknown individuals. The blast reduced one of the slabs to rubble and severely damaged the capstone. After the detonation, a car was filmed leaving the scene. The Georgia Bureau of Investigation said in a statement that it is investigating the explosion together with the Elbert County Sheriff's Office. A few hours later, the structure was completely demolished due to safety reasons. When I first spoke about the Guidestones a few years ago, I never thought I would ever witness this massive structure being completely demolished. Well, the real Stonehenge is still standing after 5,000 years, America's Stonehenge barely lasted 40 years. Some might say that the complete demolition of the Guidestones will only add to its mystery, as the identity of the man who ordered it will be forgotten forever. In 2013, Wyatt Martin, the man who helped broker the arrangement for the monument said, I made an oath to that man, and I can't break that. No one will ever know. But that being said, as stated in my past video about the Guidestones, there never was a mystery about the authors. It was always hidden in plain sight. This is the explanatory tablet of the Guidestones. The pseudonym of this mysterious man was R.C. Christian. This is a rather blatant reference to Christian Rosencruz, the legendary founder of the Rosicrucian Order, also known as the Order of the Rose Cross, R.C., a secret society that greatly influenced world events for centuries. Everything about this monument pointed directly to the occult elite and the secret societies that fuel its philosophy. Although the monument is gone, the ideals behind it are not. They've existed for centuries. However, in the 21st century, things have changed. While the masses used to be completely oblivious about these things, the information age caused a mass awakening. Now, the plans of the occult elite are met with increasing resistance and pushback. Therefore, those behind the Guidestones might actually be relieved to see the monument disappear. In an age of misleading and confusing propaganda, the Guidestones were too clear, too concise, and too damning. The elite's true intentions were literally etched in stone, for all to witness. They don't want that anymore. Nowadays, they're looking to hide their true intentions behind several layers of drivel, hogwash, and nonsense, in order to push the masses back to the dark, where they belong. While the monument is gone, sources like this channel will keep documenting its core message. Through these 10 guides, one can understand the true agenda behind most world events. In the end, in a strangely ironic twist, the Guidestones themselves fulfilled their tenth and final commandment. Be not a cancer on the earth. Leave room for nature. Leave room for nature. Before I end this video, let's say thank you to everyone who took the time and energy to research this. They have done a lot for us all. And thank you for watching the video until the end, I hope this information is useful for all of us. See you in the next video.